Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Saeed Ali Mardan Azim. Welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we will learn some basics about polar coordinates and polar integral. And then we will learn how we can transform a Cartesian integral into a polar integral. Polar coordinate is a system which is used to locate a point in two-dimensional plane. A point in polar coordinate is represented by r and theta, where r is the distance of the point from the origin and theta is the angle made in counterclockwise direction. In this diagram, if there is a point in two-dimensional plane, then this is the distance r of this point from the origin and theta is the angle measured in counterclockwise direction for this point. Next, we have the transformation equations. X is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta. These transformation equations are used to convert Cartesian coordinate into polar coordinates. And for the reverse process, we have r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared and theta is equal to tan inverse of y over x. Next, this is the general form of a polar integral, double integral over the region r, f of r of theta dA, where r is the region of our integration, f of r of theta is a function of r and theta. dA is a small area element of the region. Please note that in Cartesian integral, we were used to of you taking dA is equal to dx dy or dy dx, but in polar coordinates, we will always take dA is equal to r dr d theta. So that's why the value of dA here is r dr d theta. The and since r is our inner variable, so limits of r may be constant, may be variable. So I have taken here the limits of r is equal to g1 of theta and limit upper limit as r is equal to g2 of theta. Theta is our outer variable. So limits of theta are always constant. And here the limits of theta are in the form of radian measure of angle in counterclockwise direction. In the next step, we will learn how we can evaluate limits of r. In order to calculate the limit of r, we will pass an arrow through our region. The boundary through which this arrow enters will give you the lower limit and the boundary through which this arrow exit will give you the upper limit of r. Next, for this region, this is our starting point and this is our ending point in counterclockwise direction. So we will measure the, the starting angle and the ending angle of this region in the counterclockwise direction. If the starting angle is alpha and ending angle is beta, then the limits of theta are alpha to beta. Next. This is the equation of circle in general form. If we take center of the circle AB equal to zero, zero, means if we shift the center of circle at origin, then equation number one reduces as x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Now, if we solve this equation number two for x, we have equation number three and four. And if we solve this equation number two for y, we have equation number five and six. Next, we will learn which part of the circle is represented by equation number three, four, five, and six. So x is equal to minus square root of r squared minus y squared is a semicircle in the left half plane. x is equal to square root of r squared minus y squared is a semicircle in right half plane. y is equal to square root of r squared minus x squared is a circle in the upper half plane. And y is equal to minus r squared minus x squared square root is a semicircle in the lower half plane. Please note that all these semicircles have center at origin. That is zero, 0, Now, after knowing some basic things, we are able that we can solve this problem. Exercise 15.4, question number 21. Change the Cartesian integral into an equivalent polar integral. In order to convert this Cartesian integral into polar integral, we need some boundaries. These boundaries are obtained from the limiting values of the variable. Here, the limits of x are 0 to 1, limits of outer variable, and limits of y are x2 square root of 2 minus x square x equal to 0 is equation of y axis, x equal to 1 is equation of a vertical line, y equal to x is equation of a line passing through the point where the value of x and y is same, like 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, and so on. And y is equal to square root of, square root of 2 minus x square is equation of a semicircle in the upper half plane with center at origin and radius square root of 2. Please note that here, the radius of circle is square root of 2. Next, I have plotted these boundaries this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis. Please note that x-axis is not involved in our boundary, so I have make it dotted. Next, from here, you can see this portion is the only bounded region by all the four boundaries. So this is our required region of integration, this one. Where is my mouse is right now. So from this boundary, this is our required region of integration. Next, highlighting our 
region of integration. And in the next step, after highlighting the region of integration, we will calculate the limits of R and theta. In order to calculate limits of R, we will pass an arrow through our region starting from origin. This arrow starts from origin. And whenever your origin is, is involved in your boundaries, the lower limit of R is always zero. And this arrow exits through the boundary, which is the boundary of circle. Since this circle has radius square root of two, so distance of each point of the boundary of this circle from the origin is equal to radius, which is equal to square root of two. So the lower limit of R is zero and the upper limit of R is square root of two. Next, in order to calculate limits of theta, please note that in counterclockwise direction, our region start from this boundary, which is purple, x equal to y. So in the next step, in order to calculate limits of theta, we use this formula theta is equal to tan inverse of y over x. And we will use this equation x is equal to y in this formula. So for lower limit of theta, we have substituted y is equal to x. So we have theta is equal to tan inverse of x over x. Theta is equal to tan inverse of 1, which is equal to pi by 4. For upper limit, please note that our region ends at y axis. Equation of y axis is x equal to 0. So substituting this equation in this formula, theta is equal to tan inverse of y over x, we have theta is equal to tan inverse of y over 0. Theta is equal to tan inverse of infinity, which is equal to pi by 2. So these are the limits of r and these are the limits of theta for the region. Next, we will convert our Cartesian integral into a polar integral. In order to convert this Cartesian integral into polar integral, we have replaced x with r cos theta, y with r sin theta, dy dx with r dr d theta. These are the limits of r we have already calculated and these are the limits of theta we have already calculated. In the next step, making a simplification, we, take, we can take r common from here and outside of here we have r square r into r become r square. Now with respect to r, cos theta plus 2 sin theta is constant. It remains as it is. And we will apply integration on r square. Integration of r square is r cube over 3 for the given limits. In the next step, applying the limits, upper limit minus lower limit. Now, after applying the limits, we have square root of 2 cube over 3 as constant. We can take it outside. and square root of 2 cube is 2 square root of 2 over 3. We can take it outside. And now we are left with cos theta plus 2 sine theta for the limits pi by 4 to pi by 2. In order to integrate, please remember this formula. Integration of sine is minus cos. Integration of cos is plus sine. Integrating each term. Integration of cos is sine. And integration of sine is minus cos. That's why sine is changed here plus 2 to minus 2. In the next step, applying the limits, upper limit minus lower limit. After calculating the limits, substituting the value of sine pi by 2, sine pi by 2 is 1, cos pi by 2 is 0, sine pi by 4 is 1 by square root of 2, and cos pi by 4 is 1 by square root of 2. In the next step, we will make the simplifications. 1 minus 2 minus uh, 1 by square root of 2 minus 2 by square root of 2 become 1 plus 1 over square root of 2. Next, taking the LCM and then square root of 2 and square root of 2 will cancel out. And our answer is 2 by 3 square root of 2 plus 1. I hope you understand this question. Please like, subscribe, and share this content with your fellows. Allah Hafiz.